My message today is going to be in St. John 3 about Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus was a leader of the Pharisees. Well, I'll, I'll get to it here in a minute. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Now, here was a leader of the Jewish nation at the time. One of the leaders of the Jewish nation admitted openly that Jesus came from God and was from God because he did miracles and admitted that it could not be done except he be from God and God be with him. Isn't that something? Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, Jesus said, except, talking to every one of you out there, a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, let alone enter into it. You won't even see it unless you're born again. And there's a whole lot of talk about being born again today. A lot of talk about it. But very few people know what it means. Even those that are talking about it don't even know what it means. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, or surely, surely, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Except you repent and are baptized, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Mm-hmm. That's what it means. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Now, when you repent and are baptized and receive the Holy Spirit, then you become a spiritual man. But until you become a spiritual man, you're of flesh, and flesh profiteth nothing according to the Word of God. Your flesh is worthless in the sight of God unless it has the Spirit of God in it. Marvel not that I said unto you, ye must be born again. The wind blows where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Now, when I first repented and received the Holy Spirit, I didn't know where it came from, and I didn't know where it was going to take me. But I'll tell you one thing. It felt so good for 33 years. I don't care where it came from. And I know now where it's going to take me. It's going to take me right in to the kingdom of God. I have entered in to the kingdom of God by being born again of the water, of the blood, and of the Spirit. My faith in Jesus Christ. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Well, I'm going to tell you how today. I'm going to tell you how. Jesus answered and said unto him, Are you a master of Israel and know not these things? There's many masters out there in the world today, and even they don't even know what I'm telling you today. I'm talking about the masters of church services. I'm talking about ministers, masters of this word that don't even tell this and don't even know it because they haven't been preaching it for the last 33 years that I know of. I haven't heard any of them preach it. I haven't heard it preached, not in its entirety, just a little strip here and a little strip there, and just enough so that they won't be uh, harassed about it. <laughs> Praise God, I don't care. I, I got something to say, I'm going to say it while I'm able to say it. Verily I say unto you, we speak that we do know. Now, see, I speak what I know. I'm like Jesus. I'll just speak what I know to be a fact and to be the truth and testify what we have seen and receive not our witness. He even told Nicodemus right there, said, you're not even receiving my witness. You're not paying any more attention to what I'm saying than anything. Yet you're a master in Israel. You're a master. You're a teacher. You're not hearing me. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Jesus had a good point there, didn't he? Even if I sit here and tell you of earthly things about repenting and believing and 
being baptized and receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, and you don't believe that, how would you be, uh, believe if I told you that God had taken me up to glory and let me see some of the things in glory at one time in a vision? Would you believe that? You wouldn't. But if you believe in being baptized and receiving the Holy Ghost, then you'll believe that uh, God will take you into glory and let you see his in a vision and let you see what it looks like. Because he said, I will show every man his habitation. That's in Proverbs. Mm -hmm. And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Now there Jesus was standing there talking to Nicodemus, and yet he said, the Son of Man is in heaven. Now how can you be on earth and in heaven at the same time? Well, Jesus knew that his angel beheld the face of the Father, or God. Once you receive the Holy Ghost, your angel then, or your spirit, beholds the face of God. You'll find that in Psalm 149. And even Jesus himself said it. Know ye not that your angel beholds the face of God? That's why you must be born again. Get the Spirit of God within you, then your image is before God, or your spirit is before God 24 hours a day. How many Christians have ever known that? Well, that's part of being a Christian, knowing that you're saved and that your angel beholds the face of God and that he hears every one of your prayers. That's why he gives you tongues to speak in tongues. That's the born to get part of the born to begin experience, is to speak in tongues because he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not unto man but unto God. And that's why the devils out there don't like for you to learn to speak in tongues or want you to speak in tongues because that's a direct uh, uh, conversation with God the Father the mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ, or Christ within your hope of glory, talking to God through your spirit and using your mouth. Isn't that fantastic, what God can do to this natural body? And in just a moment. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Now by that he means for you to call on the name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord Jesus, here am I. Save my soul. Let me find somebody that will baptize me and receive your Holy Spirit. And then you'll be lifting him up. Mm -hmm. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now this is Jesus' own words. He said, if you'll believe in me, I will fill you with my spirit. I will give you everlasting life. Isn't that a fantastic promise? There's no other God that ever made or could make that kind of promise. Some of the uh, meditation gods say that you can gain uh, bliss in 10 years if you meditate and set and freeze yourself and in, a, in a certain position for so many, for 10 years. Well, here, you can know God and be filled with the Spirit in 10 seconds or less. The time that it takes you to say, Lord, forgive me my sin. Uh-huh. You can go past bliss in 10 seconds. It doesn't take you 10 years to get there. If it took 10 years, nobody on earth would be saved at all. It takes about 10 seconds or less if you're serious and mean business with God. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's the only thing that's going to straighten this world out is a great revival in this land and people getting back to Christ like they did back in the old days, to get back to Christ like the writers of our Constitution did, get down on their knees and start praying for the things they need and thanking God for what they already have. That's what it's going to take to straighten this nation out. He that believes on him is not condemned. That means to think. There's a semicolon there that says think. But he that believeth not is condemned already. You people out there that say that you don't believe in God, you're condemned already. You're condemned to an eternal death, an eternal torment, because he had not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of the God. If you don't believe in Jesus Christ, there's no hope for you in this life or the one to come. There is none for you at all, period. There's a period after this. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. The deeds of men today are evil. You can't even trust your neighbor anymore because his mind is evil affected. If you've got a little better car than he's got, he hates you. If you got a little better looking house, I painted my house here a while back from an old dingy uh, gray uh, unpainted house to a white house. And the first thing I knew it was on television that I had a great mansion up here that I'd painted. My house was all painted white and they didn't like white houses. 
Well, 82% of the houses in the United States today are painted white, and that's a statistic that you can check on and find to be true. <laughs> I like white. It's a sign of purity. It's a sign that you've got some ambition behind you to make your property and pay your taxes and, and make things look better. Now, I like to pay my taxes because I'm in a free country. I don't feel that I've got any unjust taxes because God blesses me. The government here blesses me mm -hmm, by keeping me a free man and letting me preach like I'm preaching on, on uh, national television. I haven't got a complaint in this world about my taxes, folks. I would like to see the commissioner uh, maintain my road once in a while uh, more often, more than once a year, because I pay taxes to have it done. So I mentioned it. But if he's unjust, he goes to hell for it. I don't. If he's unjustly using my taxes, that's between him and God, or the God that he's serving. For everyone that doth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Now, when I first got saved, my deeds, early deeds in my early life, was reproved, taken away from me, done away with, <laughs> and love and joy and peace and contentment, and a good conscience ensued with me this last 33 years. It says, if your conscience condemns you not, then are you in Christ Jesus. But if you folks out there that's got a, a, a leaky conscience, or a hurting conscience, or can't sleep at night, well, call on the name of Jesus and tell him to clear your mind and clear your soul of all your evil deeds and save your soul and let you die in peace or live in peace. Either way. My first prayer of repentance was, Lord, save my soul and let me die in peace. I was 27 years old. Instead of letting me die in peace, he raised me up and added 33 years to my life so far in love and joy and peace and made me alive, healed my body from a terminal cancer patient to a lively man for another 33 years. Mm -hmm. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light. I came to the light. I came to Jesus Christ. That his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. I know my deeds this last 33 years have been wrought in God because I feel great. My conscience is clear. I have the love of you folk out there and you young people and you shut-ins. And I love every race, creed, and color on this earth. For the Lord himself loved you. For he said, whosoever will, let him come. He that's weary and heavy laden, come unto me and I'll give you rest. This is Jesus' words. This is the kind of a God we're serving. One without prejudice and one without controversy is great. Mm -hmm. After these things came Jesus and his disciples into the land of Judea. And there he tarried with them and baptized. It said Jesus tarried there. With his, with his disciples, and baptized. Mm -hmm. And John also was baptizing at Inan, near, the, near Selim, because there was much water there, and they came and were baptized. Now, I wonder why they had to have much water. Well, a bowl of water won't get it. That's sprinkling. Much water buried him, buried with him in baptism. Not sprinkled, buried. If you want to take a baptism by sprinkling, just wait till it showers a little bit and walk out and hold your face up and let, let it come from heaven and sprinkle you if you call that baptism. Now, I have nothing against uh, denominal baptismal services like that. It's just the idea is it just don't get the job done yet. Never did, never will. <laughs> I'll just tell you the truth about it. For John was not yet cast into prison. Then there arose a question between some of John's disciples and the Jews about purifying. And they came unto John and said unto him, Rabbi, he that was with thee beyond Jordan, to whom thou bearest witness, behold the same baptizer, and all men come to him. He said, John, you're supposed to be the Baptist around here. How come they're going to Jesus and being baptized of him? Come to him. John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven or from above. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. Mm-hmm. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which uh, standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This is my joy, therefore is fulfilled. See, they tried to create a jealous spirit between John and Jesus. That's what's going on matter with the denominations today. There's a jealous spirit between them. Baptists against the Catholics. Jews against the Christians. So on, so on, so on, so on. 
You know what I'm talking about. You all, you all live here on this earth, and you're old enough to understand exactly what I'm saying without me explaining it. Well, I'll tell you what, if we all get together and pull together, the United States of America will get back to God, and we'd get the Bibles back in the schools. You can even put the Torah in schools if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't hurt you a bit. It's the same reading that we have in the Old Testament. He must increase, but I must decrease. Now, if we had that kind of an attitude in this world today among the religious proselytes, we'd have millions of people saved and serving God. We'd have millions of dope addicts off of the street. We'd have millions of young teenagers uh, rejoicing in the Lord and praising God and reading their Bibles in public and anywhere else and not be ashamed of it. Mm -hmm. But the spirits that are taking over the earth today makes it, make, tries to make you sound like you're a kook because you read your Bible. Well, they don't say anything when you go to reading some of the uh, filth that's put out by the uh, publishing companies. They don't say anything to a kid that carries uh, a Playboy magazine to school with him or Playgirl, sex magazines. They don't say anything against the rock, and rock stars that get up and preach everything from suicide to sex to the adultery. They don't say anything against that. But just read your old righteous Bible in public and you get arrested. Something how far from God the United States of America has gotten. Well, I'm not going to get in politics, but I just want to let you know I know what's going on. I'm going to tell you about it. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. That He that cometh from heaven is above all. This is what Jesus is telling them here. And what he hath seen and heard, that he testifieth, and no man receiveth his testimony. Very few people received Jesus' testimony in those days except those chosen of God. He that hath received his testimony hath set to his seal that God is true. Now, I've received the testimony of Jesus Christ, and I know God is true. I know God is alive. I know God is with me because I have the Holy Spirit and I do speak in tongues. Now, I don't make a big deal out of speaking in tongues. I don't preach it in my church that it's absolutely a thing that has to be uh, shown every time you come to church. Those tongues have their purpose, and it's mostly to benefit you. It gives you power to talk direct to God. And in the church, it, has, it, it gets the attention of the people so that they can be still long enough to hear the interpretation thereof and understand what God's talking about through a prophet or a prophetess. Now, I believe in the church, according to the word, you have to have an apostle, a prophet, evangelist, pastor, and a teacher. I call it the five-fold ministry. And in my organization, I have the five-fold ministry operating. I have apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers in the working body in the church. But we have it decently and in order. Now, I'm not Pentecostal, folks. I'm not anything. I have my own organization. A lot of you have written in and said, what church do you belong to? Well, I have my own private organization. I'm registered in the states where I preach. And I'm registered as an ordained minister. And I am an ordained minister. So don't worry about where I come from or where I'm going or what I belong to. I don't belong to anything that is called denomination. I'll guarantee you that. I only belong to an organization enough to get me by man's law in this land and to obey the laws of this land from the tax laws on down to the speeding laws. I obey them. I belong to an organization that believes in obeying the laws of the land and honoring the police forces and the security forces of this land that protect us. We honor them. I am not against my government, but I'm against some of the people in it that are trying to do away with some of my rights because I am an educated man and I know how to read that Constitution. And it reads, means exactly what it says, the same as the Bible means exactly what it says. I'm putting out this information so some of you can have something to think about. All right. Went on to say here, For he whom God hath sent speaks the word of God, for God gives not the Spirit by measure to him. Now, the Lord has never given me a measure of the Spirit. He's always given me power to speak the word openly right from the book. I don't have to uh, guess or to be afraid of what I say because I speak the truth and nothing can come against the truth in the long run. It says, The Father loves the Son and hath given all things into his hand. Now, Jesus Christ has all the power of this earth and the power to come in his hand because he came and he fulfilled the word of God and his Father's will. He came to this earth and delivered his people 
through his power, his word, and his spirit. He that believes on the Son has everlasting life. Now, that's quite a statement, isn't it? And he that believes not the Son shall not see life. Something to think about. But the wrath of God abides on him. The wrath of God abides on every person that does not believe in God. That is a statement made here in this book many, many times over in the New Testament. I suppose that's why the atheist wanted the Bible out of the schools. is because it tells you exactly where you stand and how you stand. Mm -hmm. I want to go over here now. First chapter of St. John, the 43rd verse. And I want to give some of you folks an idea how easy it is to follow Jesus. On the 43rd verse, it said, The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and finds Philip and said unto him, Follow me. People, today I have found you on television and on the radio programs that you listen to. And I'm saying to you, follow Jesus. It's that simple. Just follow Jesus. All Jesus said to that man to save his soul and to convert him, and he made him one of the greatest evangelists that the world has ever known out of him, was follow me. That's all Jesus had to say to that man. Mm -hmm. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Peter finds Nathanael and said unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. We found the Messiah. We found him. Folks, you can find the Messiah right now simply by saying, Jesus, save me. It's that simple. It's as simple to say that as it was for Jesus to say to Philip, follow me. That's how simple it is to get to God. Jesus, save me. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, You just come and see. Come and see. Can any good come out of me saying, Jesus, forgive me my sin? Well, try it and see. Try it and see. One time I was working in a packing house while I was going to Bible school, I worked for my own uh, money then and supported myself. And uh, this young man got on the elevator with me one night and said he was going to knock the Holy Ghost out of me. And uh, I, I began to preach to him. And I just set the elevator. We had eight floors there on automatic, so it would go to the eighth floor, come back down to the basement, go back up to the eighth floor, and go back down to the basement. So for the next 10 or 15 minutes, we were going from the basement to the eighth floor, up and down. And I knew if I kept going long enough, he wasn't used to the feel of that elevator, he'd get kind of sick. <laughs> so I just preached to him, and the more I preached to him, the sicker he got. And finally, I got him to the eighth floor, and I opened the door, and I said, Now, you get in your closet this evening, and if you don't believe what I say, you get in there and you say, Jesus, 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 until something happens. And I said, You won't say it very long until something happens. And you know, the next morning, he was at my church, at 7.30, wanting in, God had saved him in that closet. God had answered him when he called on the name of the Lord. And he, his wife, and his five children got converted, stayed in my church for about two years, went to Bible school, and he's now preaching and ministering in a church in Concordia, Kansas, and he's been there for the last 21 years, doing a great work for God. Isn't that something? He tried it. You young people out there, if you want to try something new, you get together in a quiet place even as a group or as an individual, you start calling on the name of the Lord. Jesus of Nazareth, here am I, save me. Or Lord Jesus, save me and teach me. Anyway, he'll, he'll hear you. It's that easy. If somebody would have told me that when I was a child or when I was a teenager, I would have done anything to got right with God. I would have done what they said, but no preacher was preaching it. They just said, join the church and... Believe on the Lord and you'll be saved. Well, it doesn't take that. It takes some doing on your part too. So folks, repent now. Call on the name of the Lord. Be baptized. Receive his Holy Spirit. And join me in the love and the peace and the glory of God for an eternity. I see my time is getting away from me again. Seems like I just get started to preach and my time runs out. But my program's only 30 minutes long, so I have to kind of guard my time. Write to me. There will be no follow-up. I don't beg for money. I don't ask for money. I'm honest, and I'm going to stay that way for your sake. And I love you, 
I'm praying for you. Pray for me. Amen. Road to righteousness tends to be long. So keep your love 